Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shauna Randolph, the spokesperson for the Edmonton Humane Society, and welcome to our March Edmonton Humane Society's podcast, coming to you live from the Fuse Logic Studio in Sherwood Park. That's just east of Edmonton. Coming up in this month's show, you will meet an EHS alumnus animal who also, well, he gave Betty White a kiss while filming a TV star. Stay tuned for more on that. Also coming up, how to keep your cats exercised and entertained while staying in the safety of your home and some new ways that kids can have a blast and educated in our shelter, including an expansion of our upcoming summer day camps, which will be filling up very fast, by the way. And as usual, we have Evan Adnams from Fuse Logic. He's behind the scenes. Hi there, Evan. Good He's the guy <laughs> pressing all the buttons and, and basically monitoring the chat room as well. We'll give you an opportunity to send in questions and hopefully have time at the end of the show to answer some of them. So that's always fun. But first, our hot topics. We have this section every month. Basically, it's a way to keep you up to date on some of the hot things that are happening in society. And coming up this month, we are being proactive as we head into the very beginning of kitten season at the Edmonton Humane Society Shelter. That season is definitely here. It usually peaks toward the end of March. Our shelter is already filling up with felines. We need to adopt out as many as possible right now to make room for the huge amount that we'll soon be bringing in. 290 felines are in our care right now, so get ready for the return of Wish Upon a Whisker Wednesday on March 16th. It is our lucky shamrocks, all the adult cats that have been with us for 30 days or longer, and those on the adoption floor in our cat condos, not the life rooms. They will have their adoption fees waived, and anyone who can't adopt right now can sponsor the adoption fees for someone else who can. Anybody who can bring a cat into their family right now. All this helps us out financially during the Adoption Incentive event. You can sponsor online or call 491-3507. And we will have more, of course, right now on our website. All you have to do is check out edmontonhumanesociety.com. More on Wish Upon a Whisker Wednesday, which is happening this Wednesday, the 16th, from 2 until 7 p.m., so please spread the word on that. And now, a look at what's been going on at the Edmonton Humane Society since our last show. It is time for our month in review. Every day is quite eventful in the animal shelter world, so this month, a look at a celebration with the adoption of two of our longest staying residents, an extremely generous girl pays us a visit, and emergency surgery on a puppy who came to us after swallowing an entire chicken. Take a look at that. First, the life-saving operation for Twinkie, a five-month-old shepherd mix. She came to us in horrible shape on March 4th after being found as a stray in Sturgeon County. Twinkie swallowed a chicken and the body was stuck in her stomach. We rushed her into surgery and removed the bones and feathers that were stuck, saving her. She's recovering now and we'll keep you posted on her. Tiny Marvel has had a pretty eventful few weeks. She was struck by a car at the end of February and came into our care. Although clearly in pain, this tiny stray girl easily showed her appreciation to our medical staff with purrs and snuggles. X-rays showed a fractured pelvis and femur which required surgery to fix her up. That happened on March 4th thanks to two of our fantastic surgeons. If that operation didn't happen, clearly Marvel would have faced a lot more pain and a horrible quality of life. But now she's in foster care, healing until she's ready for adoption. We'll also keep you posted on Marvel. We celebrated the adoption of two very long-term residents of our shelter at the beginning of March. Carrera and Kim Poy, the rabbits, hopped their way into the heart of Bill Johnson, who decided to bring them both home. Bill clearly loved the affectionate bunny so much. Before Bill came along, we were fearful that Carrera and Kim Poy would set a new record of being in our care longer than any other animals. They came in as strays in April of 2010 and were adopted out almost 11 months later. The current record is held by another rabbit pair that were with us for 11 and a half months. And here's a fantastic act of generosity for a young girl. Ten-year-old Jade Campori called us at the end of February with a fantastic donation. She wanted to use money she received as Christmas gifts to sponsor a dog kennel. So she came by with her mom to pick out the one that she'll put her name on for the next year, a $100 donation matched by her mom in order to pay the $200 kennel sponsorship for the year. Thank you so much, Jade and her mom. It is just great what some kids do. 
And educating children is the focus of this month programs and services section of the show. Every month on the show, we feature one of our very popular programs and services where we help people be responsible pet owners and bring in funds to help us care for our shelter animals at the same time. So this month, I chat with our coordinator of education services, Jessica Crosley, about a few new exciting opportunities for your kids to have fun and be enlightened in our building. Here's a look at that conversation. So Jessica, some exciting new additions happening to your department. Absolutely, we're growing every single year. So we had our first year of teachers convention camp in February and March, and then our summer camp starts up in July, and we're running eight full weeks. And that's different than last year. It is. We did seven weeks last year, five the year before that, and I can't believe we're going into our third year of camp. So this is Camp Sit, Stay, Play. Camp Sit, Stay, Play, that's right. So what do kids do when they're here with that? Well, lots of animal interaction. There's never enough. I could leave them in the, in the cat room or the dog areas for the entire day, and that wouldn't be enough time. But they do crafts and games and lots of learning about animals and how to be safe. Right, and that's the biggest thing. That's the whole purpose of it, right? Absolutely. We want to encourage children to be responsible pet owners as they get older, and we want them to be able to teach their families about all of the things that are so important, the dog bite prevention, animal safety. So it's not just Camp Sit, Stay, Play. There's so many other things you're doing. Absolutely. They have positive animal interactions. So we have a collection of education animals. A lot of them are behind me right now, not the children, the animals. <laughs> So it's, it's just fantastic. They get to meet lots of different species. We have bearded dragons, leopard geckos, we have a parrot, cockatiels, lovebirds. So they have the opportunity to interact with animals that they may have never even seen before. And what about a program that you have for parents and tots? Yeah, that's called tail waggers. So moms and dads and their children between two and five can come to the Humane Society and learn a little bit about animals, have great story time, and visit with some of the education animals and view our shelter as well. So we talked about the really young ones, the tots, and then the school age kids. Yeah. And then you also have a Muttley Crew. Tell us about that. Uh, Muttley Crew, it's undergoing some changes for the next school year, but right now we're running it every other week and sign up is full already, but the kids, similar to camp, but they're here more often and they get animal interactions. They get to do a little bit of volunteering, but it's supervised and in a very structured setting. So it's not like our regular volunteer program, but the kids absolutely love it. And you just keep expanding and expanding. It just seems like more and more people are turning to the Edmonton Humane Society with tips on what can I do to keep my kids act active and, and educated and making a difference in the community in regards to the companion animals. Absolutely. Our motto for the education department is that we hope to educate the, the community to basically lessen the need for the Edmonton Humane Society and the only way we can do that is by further expanding our education program. And so what do people do? How do they get involved in this? Check out our website. That's the best place to start. We have our humane education programs listed on there, birthday parties, summer camp information will be made available today so that so everyone can check it out and, and just really see what we have to offer because there's so much. And it's always work as, as quickly as you can to get your, your child in, right? Because everything's so popular. Absolutely. Our programs fill so quick, summer camp especially. So if you see a date or a week that you're interested in, register right away. Don't, don't put it off. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Shana. So to learn more about the programs and to sign up for our summer camp, do it right away because the spots, boy, they fill up pretty quickly. Visit our website at edmontonhumanesociety.com. Stick around after the short break. We're going to have live in our studio an EHS alumnus pet who's also a TV star. Don't go away. Yes, ready, ready. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. Hi, I'm Betty White, and this is Yogi one of the four million beautiful dogs that end up in shelters and breed rescues every year. I've been an animal lover all of my life, and it breaks my heart to know that more than 5,000 dogs every day need a home. I know it, sweetheart, I'm talking about it. So let's help Yogi and all those other dogs in need right now. Your donation to the Pedigree Foundation will support its mission to help dogs find loving homes. With help from dog lovers like you, we will fund grants to support thousands of shelters and breed rescues. Visit pedigreefoundation.org and make a donation. And the Pedigree brand will match the total contributions received up to $500,000. 
Your money will provide food and comfort for these dogs while they wait for a home. So please, visit pedigreefoundation.org. It's the least we can do for our best friends, like Yogi. Welcome back. Notice Yogi, the dog, in that public service announcement? Well, he gave Betty White a wonderful kiss, and he's here in studio. He is part of the most recent California Canine Cuties transfer that happened back in February, and we knew that he was in that that spot, and so we brought him in to be part of our success story section for our show, and he's here with his Alberta owner, Trevor Stanton. Welcome, you two. Hi. Hi, Yogi. <laughs> he's so comfortable, mm. hey, now? Yeah, he's a lot better. Yeah. So what do you think? You have a dog who has been part of a very important public service announcement encouraging mm -hmm. people to adopt from shelters. Um, yeah, it's a great cause, and uh, we heard your radio spot. Yeah. So we looked on the website, and there he was, and... We took it from there. We lined up early. So you knew that there was a group of dogs coming from California, part of the yep. transfer, and then you went on our website and saw Yogi and, mm -hmm. and that love at first sight? Or? Pretty much, yeah. We liked him. What were you looking for? This particular type of dog? Uh, no, actually just a smaller dog Okay. with a big personality, and uh, he fits in perfectly. So what was it that really triggered for him? or for you, when you, you came down to the shelter and, and saw him in person and decided he was perfect for your family? Um, just that he was a small dog, okay. uh, big on personality, like I say, and uh, we just thought that he would fit in with our family. And you have some cats. We do. And so how is, first of all, what kind of personality does he have and how does that work with your cats? He's easy going and uh, he gets along with all the cats pretty much. He, he makes sure he's assertive if uh, someone gets close to his food. Uh -huh. So, yeah. And he's pretty quiet though, is he always this quiet? Uh, no, he barks once in a while, but not very often. So he's pretty good that way. So what do you think about him being, you know, so well well known, especially down in the United States and coming up and, and that sort of thing? Because you didn't know when you first no, came down to the shelter know. about him. We didn't know. Uh, we heard a rumor yeah. after when we were there. And uh, then you confirmed it when you gave me a call. Yeah, and we were so, so glad that he said yes to come in with Yogi. <laughs> so Trevor, what was it that brought you to the Edmonton Humane Society in the first place? Well, it's a good cause for one thing, and uh, we we actually heard your radio spot about it, and about it's nice that they have it all on the, the website that you can check out the pictures. Right. Um, and uh, it's such a nice building, too. So you've been keeping an eye on uh, on the shelter for a while in your search for a dog? No, actually, we just heard your radio spot. And that's what brought it you It really triggered it, so oh. we uh, really have you to thank for oh, well, that we're so Yogi about coming that. into our family. Oh, Yogi, that's so wonderful. Do you give another kiss? No? No? <laughs> I really appreciate you taking your time to come in, Trevor. Just one last word for people watching if anybody wants to adopt from the Humane Society after your experience. Uh, it's a great cause. It really is. Uh, he's neutered and microchipped, licensed for a year. Uh, yeah, they, they educate you. Right. And a bunch of uh, brochures in this type of thing. Yeah, it, that's it's a, really a good experience. It's all part of it, although it's a long uh, adoption process, a couple hours. Yeah, it's a couple hours. Education, and you get mm -hmm. a great package in the end. You do. Well, thank you, Yogi. You, <laughs> he looks at me like, are you done yet, lady? <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> thank you very much for coming in, both of you. Very much appreciate that. Our behavior department often gets calls from people that are desperate. They need help with their pet, especially cat owners right now with felines that just go stir crazy while being in the home. Well, this week in our Let's Hear from the EHS Expert section, I recently spoke with our behavior training manager, Belinda Manager, Wagner, who has some fantastic tips on how to keep your cat exercised and mentally stimulated in the safety of your own home. And here is that conversation for you right now. So Belinda, the first question, because many people are wondering, why do cats need some enrichment just like dogs? You know, they're a very uh, energetic species. They're very territorial. They're very tactile. They like to touch things and chase things. So I get a lot of calls on the behavior hotline about, oh, my cat's getting aggressive. If you don't give them these outlets, they can become aggressive and start biting you and all sorts of interesting behaviors. Right, and we don't want to do this outside for enrichment, right? Really indoors. Yeah, indoors, because if cats go outside, they can get hit by cars, they can get diseases, they can get taken by coyotes. You just really, we 
absolutely want you to keep your cats indoors, which leads to some very simple solutions. Right, and then you have some demonstrations, which we is do. great. So show us, and tell me who you have to we've, demonstrate. You we've, got, we've got Quinton here, and these are some actual store-bought solutions. So Quinton is kind of, if you see here, this is his favorite toy, which is a leather leash. And Quinton loves his leash. This is his best friend. So he carries this everywhere with him. So here we've got some store-bought. Let's move over to this one. Okay. This is actually a feeder. So this is a, a useful tool in that you've got to feed your cat through it. So we're pretending this is food. All right. And it goes in here, and the cats have to fish out the food. So they've got some enrichment with their paws here, oh, really? fishing out the food. Quinton, okay. come see. Quinton, look. He's focused on the leash. he loves his leash. There's some food in there. See, Quinton? There's your leash. Okay, I can see how they'd really be interested yeah, in that. Yeah, and they have to eat, so it's good for their hands to get going. Then we have a classic cat tunnel here. All right. So with Quinton, of course, he just loves his leash. And you can get them used to the tunnel. It's crinkly. It's got toys in there. You know, and they like to get inside things. How many of you have brought home a grocery bag and the cats, you know, jump in it? Right. So then we get to the point where, well, people don't have a lot of extra money. So classic things, a box, okay? Here's the box, they come in. Now, Quinton loves little holes and things. He loves his little leash. He's going to his, one of his favorite bags, but let's see if he'll go in here and get his little leash. Here, Quinton. It's in there, Quinton. Look, look at your leash. Okay, and then you've got, this is just a little toy you can poke through and have him kind of play. He just is focused yes, on that Yes, he is. He loves his leash. And he loves this kind of bag. This is a bag from Ikea. It's not, nothing special. It's wrinkly. It's crinkly. Tap on the other side. Cats will go in there and play with it, you know? And they like to pounce and play. And, and then you can actually make a little jump for these animals. So they like to be active, they like to climb. You should have lots of different levels of height. Okay. And so we can lure him onto here. Let's see if he'll climb. This is just an old milk crate. He says, where's my leash? Yeah. Hey, Quentin, you can pick them up there and give them a pat on there, let them feel things out. He says, where's my bag? You know, and he loves to follow his leash. So these are things, there's lots of different texture for them. Lots of things for them to play with and hide in. And you don't have to spend a, a lot of money. No, these, these are things items. you have at home, right? right? And then the other two items are in Bingo's. Yeah, Bingo's Pet, Pet Shop, Store. Which is right here in the Edmonton Humane Society shelter, and all proceeds from everything purchased there go directly into shelter operations for our animals. Yes. Um, so something like that, or just being creative with what you have in your home. Absolutely. And so you do get a lot of calls of people saying, my cat is stir crazy this yeah, time Yeah, the cat's year. becoming aggressive, so I always say to them, do you have lots of... Um, height for the cat to climb, because cats like to climb. So some scratching posts, we have those at Bingo's. They're probably the cheapest in the city here. And uh, lots of outlets, because what cats will do is they'll climb onto the window and then they'll start growling at other cats. So you want to make sure they're enriched and have lots of different surfaces and textiles to play in and, and things like that to make sure they don't get aggressive with you. So a happy cat that is well stimulated is a happier pet. And Absolutely. you're happy in the end. Absolutely. You don't get things like house soiling and behavior problems and things like that. So there he is in his box. <laughs> so down here, he, he loves that box for sure. So Belinda, you get calls, the, the hotline for people to call for more assistance, that sort of thing, on any kind of pet related issue. Any kind of pet related it's issue, it's 491-3521. We also have a virtual pet assistant on the website under the behavior and training and it's very easy to click on and you can pick cat or dog or horse even and you can type in a question and it'll come up with a whole bunch of resources for you okay it's very handy i'm sure more people will call now and click on that excellent thanks belinda thank you okay now to our monthly visit from the edmonton humane society's retail manager renata crosley who is here this time with austin and we're going to chat about how to get some of the winter pounds off your pet if that is what has happened with your pet over the winter time thank you for coming in as usual thank you for having me renata you get a lot of questions from people when they come into the store what is the most common one right now right now um the dogs and cats have put on quite a bit of weight. What do I do with it? Uh, Belinda spoke about a lot of things in her segment. One of the things that we always make sure for people, check with your vet. Right. Make sure that there's nothing medically wrong. And if it is just being, oh, I don't want to do anything, it's still crazy, 
there's few things you can do. And on Belinda's segment, you saw a couple things as the feeder, yeah. which is great for them to put the food in, and they can't get to it as fast. So of yeah. course, they don't eat as fast, they don't gain as much weight, they have a tendency of playing with it a lot more, working towards it. Right. So that helps that, that piece for the kittens. And yeah, we did mm -hmm. talk a lot about cats, so let's talk about some of the dog items that you brought okay. in. And I know Austin's really excited about <laughs> taking part and doing some demonstrating. We'll put this one down a bit and okay. so you can see it. This is just um, a ball that has um, grooves in it cut out. Okay. And inside you can put the, the, the treat. All okay, right. so you can actually see putting something in it. What's in that, Austin? What's in it? What's in it? That one doesn't have a treat yet. He says, oh, he it? says, oh, oh yes, it does. What happens is with this one is that you put the treats in, the dog has a tendency of wanting the treat, but they go into it. So they chase it, they play with it, not as much food, but yet there is exercise in it. Okay. So it allows them to get the, the food and the treats, but not as much. All right. We have this one, which you put a lot smaller amount of food and might be just a bit. They chase it as, the, as that rolls, okay. it spews out a little bit of food. Okay. So it allows them to have it. This is a brand new one. It's, uh, it's quite soft, so it's great for the smaller dogs. You can put a, a cookie in it or you can put a soft uh, rollover in it and they actually go and chase after it. And Has then, a happy face And on a happy it. face on it, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so that helps them kind of to not only chew, but also get a reward. Now, of course, that forgets a little bit of that. All right, now we have a couple of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's these? not Easter yet. It's not quite Easter yet. This is wonderful. This is a scrambler. And this is a very hard plastic. What happens with this is majority of the dogs can't grab it with their mouth. Right. So as they roll this and they put the paw on it, it spews it out. It keeps pushing it out and of course they chase it. They really can't catch it, right. but it's the movement of the ball that keeps them moving. So it allows them to again burn the energy. The day is nice out there. Uh, we have snow, so it actually allows uh, Austin is enjoying his <laughs> treat. Is. <laughs> this is really good for those um, those breeds like Border Collies and that too, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And those are the, the ones that we often think that they will not play with the big big ball or even the small dogs that right. we don't think of it. And of course, they just think this is great because it keeps sliding on the snow or on the dirt and they end up, <laughs> Austin is right at it, um, ends up having that wonderful uh, movements for them. Belinda also showed for the kitties the tunnels. Yes, yeah, we have the, the tunnels in. The tunnels are great because you can stagger them around in your house. You can put them in the top of the stairs, bottom of the stairs. They run up and down, give them just a tiny bit of uh, catnip, and they just love it. Again, stays away from the food, right? right. So and you're really showing that there isn't a lot of creativity necessary. You just have to think a little bit, and then you can really have a well-adjusted animal, as Belinda had mentioned, and, and a lot of stress-free in, in your home. Absolutely, situation. and allows them to lose that little bit of weight. So you, instead of putting more food down and them having the anxiety of the food, allows them to have right. a little bit more fun not as much food. Well, thank you very much, both of you. Thank coming you. As usual, we have Renata Crosley and Austin in today. So visit them in the Edmonton Humane Society store. It's just right in the adoption doors at the shelter called Bingo's. Stay with us. Coming up right after this short break, gearing up for Edmonton's official pet festival, our pets in the park for 2011, and how you can start collecting sponsors right now if you're taking part. Don't go away. This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once. How my dog?
Welcome back, everyone. Every month, we like to remind you of the many ways that you can support our shelter animals. And this month, gearing up for our biggest fundraiser of the year, Pets in the Park. It is coming up, Edmonton's official pet festival this year, being held on Sunday, June the 26th in Horlack Park. You can be part of the sponsored fun run and walk, take in animal demonstrations. You can also just bring your animal to the park just to hang out as you stroll through the animal care trade show that we have every year. And we already have our website set up for you to start gathering sponsors for the Fun Runner Walk as an individual or even as a team. It's very easy with just a few clicks of your mouse. Just head online to our website for more information to our Pets in the Park page. Again, that is Sunday, June the 26th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Horlack Park. Come on by. And remember, also, when we were talking at the beginning of the show, we encouraged you to submit any questions that you hope will be answered live in the air. Well, we're at that point right now on the show. We have a question to share with you. Someone wants to know, do you have any greyhounds coming up for adoption? A very popular breed that maybe someone doesn't see often on our website. It's true, we don't have those often, but we do have dogs coming in on a regular basis, pretty much every day. So what we say to people is, just check our website regularly. We update that four times a day. And you just need to be patient because the animal of your dreams will be coming through our doors. You just have to take a look at, on a regular basis. And just remember, it is worth the wait because all of our animals come spayed or neutered, microchipped. They have their first set of vaccinations. They have a complimentary vet exam after adoption, uh, the first year of pet licensing in Edmonton and the county of Strathcona, and the first six weeks of medical insurance. It's a really good package. So we say, please be patient. That greyhound will come at some point for you. Okay, now we are at the end of our March show, and we thank you so much for coming. Coming up in our next show, which is in April, it's coming up on April the 18th, we hear from one of our animal behaviorists who's just learned all about Tellington Touch and how the therapy can help enhance the lives of homeless animals while they're staying in our shelter. You'll be amazed at what kind of a difference Tellington Touch has on them. And remember the partnership that we launched a few months ago with Paradise Pets of St. Albert? They are no longer selling cats and dogs in the pet store. Well, the owners have now decided to expand to another species of animal that they will no longer sell as well. And instead, they'll be housing our shelter animals of that species to help them get adopted in their store. We'll tell you what kind of animal next month, so stay tuned for that. Now, before I sign off, stick around to catch a special tour of our building in a video produced for us by some wonderful volunteers. You will love this. It's it's lovely. Before we play that, though, I, of course, have to thank you for watching. And please keep tabs on us on Facebook, on Twitter, on our website. And catch our March edition here. It will be on video on demand on our website and on Fuse Logic in just a few days. And stay tuned. Again, our April show is April the 18th at noon. So watch for that and take a look again at this special item produced to us, a sort of a tour of our building. Take care.